Hey guys, GW Small with the Shaving Disciple here. I've got a couple of new things to check out for you today. So one is going to be a, a Shave Forge Badger Brush that Eric over at Shave Forge sent me to evaluate and eventually give away. And the other is the Parker Adjustable Injector. So stick around, let me soak the brush and we'll come back and lather up. All right guys, so I've got the brush soaked in a little bit of water for a few minutes. Let it soak up all the water with a badger brush, you wanna do that. So let me go ahead and get to loading. I've got a little bit of soap uh, pressed into the bowl. I'll talk about the soap a little bit after we're done talking about the brush. Uh, so like I said, this brush came from Eric over at Shave Forge. He sent this to me to kind of check out on the channel and I'll be giving it away in the future. Um, it is a 20 millimeter two band badger in a chrome, uh, I think it's called the chrome modern handle. So I've been using this for a little bit. Um, oh, cost of this, so the, the handle you can get for $6.99 uh, this particular Badger Knot is $11.99. Um, Eric's shipping is very, very affordable. So um, you can get this brush shipped to your door for under $22. Bucks. So pretty good for uh, what is a nice two-band Badger. Uh, the handle is metal. I'm, I'm assuming it's probably aluminum, but I don't know. It just says chrome. Um, it's definitely got some weight and some heft. It doesn't feel plasticky or anything. So it's definitely a solid metal. Um, so, good quality handle. So, I'm going to go ahead and start loading my brush here. So, I, I'm not typically a badger guy. Um, I, I only own one. And that is more for sentimental reasons than anything else. Um, so, for this, I took the advice of a lot of wet shavers out there who do use badger brushes regularly. I started out by giving it a soak in some in some water and some uh, dishwashing detergent just to kind of clean off any manufacturing residue anything like that and then once I had soaked that for a bit I kind of lathered up the dishwashing detergent a little bit just to kind of run that all through the knot and after that, I loaded it with some shave soap and let it sit overnight. And the next morning, I went ahead and rinsed it out. And that was kind of the process I used for de-stinking the badger brush. Uh, so I went ahead and loaded and I got some, got some soap in the bowl here. We're just going to take off and put on the face. So this brush has, I think this is the fifth or sixth use. So badger brushes do have a break-in period. Um, so I didn't want to do the review until I had at least mildly broken this in. Um, some people say it takes two weeks or three weeks to fully break it in, but I think after about five or six uses, um, I've gotten to I've gotten to this where this brush um, I think is pretty well broken in. So I have had some actually some really good lathers with this brush. Um, I, I was surprised because I've always had problems lathering my badgers in the past, which is one of the reasons I moved to primarily synthetics. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a, a head lather today. Um, head lather, skull lather, dome lather, I don't know what to call it. You guys tell me. Leave me a comment. What do you think we should call lathering on, on the head? So I'm going to add a little bit of water before I get going here. And the soap I'm using today, oh, sorry, got a little bloops there. Probably had a little too much water to start. 
So the soap is Frankly My Pear by Bear Stern Man. This soap came to me from Brian over at the Wet Shave Experience. He did a 200 subscriber giveaway recently. And I was lucky enough to win that. Um, this is the Excelsior base, which I have a couple of Bear Stern Man soaps, but I believe they were the older Glissant base. So hopefully I got enough soap loaded in the brush here because this is a new soap to me. So sometimes it takes, sometimes it takes a little experimenting with a new soap, but it seems to be working okay so far. Uh, the scent on this, definitely pick up the pear and the ginger. Uh, it's very pleasant. Um, the uh, description on this, Will basically said, he tried to create a soap that smelled like uh, pear ginger pie that his mother used to make. So it's it's a really nice scent. The pear is nicely subdued by the ginger. It's it's probably medium scent strength. It's not overpowering, but it's also it's definitely there. So I really enjoy it. It's a nice scent. The, the cost on this, um, last I knew, you could still pick this up at Razor, the Razor Company. Uh, most other places might be sold out, but I think you can still get it at the Razor Company. Uh, it's, let me look here, $17.99 for four ounces of soap. And I'm going to go ahead and post a cost chart up here. I, I spoke with Chris of IMCDB about basically stealing his cost chart because I agree with it. And I think it's nice if everybody kind of has a consistent way to refer to pricing on these soaps. So this soap comes in at $4.50 an ounce, which is a good price. So the soap is taking a lot of water. You can see it's doing a good job, but still needs a little bit more water. Now this is a two band badger, so it does have some scrub, which I'm not completely used to yet, but I will say it's not irritating my skin too much. So even though it's definitely got some scrub, um, it doesn't feel bad on my head. Now, it did lose a few hairs the first few uses. I think when I was breaking it in, uh, the first couple uses it lost, I don't know, five, ten hairs each use. So probably lost somewhere around 15 15 hairs total over the first couple uses. I think the third use, it lost a couple more. Since then, it's been just fine. No more, no more hairs missing. So it seems to be broken in past that point, which I, I think is normal for badgers. I'm pretty sure all of them tend to do that during the first few uses. Um, I actually have a something like a 26 millimeter silver tip. Um, so pretty, pretty big knot that that one still, I've, I've used it probably 30 times and that one still loses hairs. So I think that's just something that tends to happen with badger brushes. So I probably didn't get quite enough soap loaded, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more water and see if we can thicken that up a little bit. So, like I said, Eric was nice enough to send me a few brushes. Uh, if you didn't see a few weeks ago, I reviewed a synthetic brush that he sent me. Um, I'll be, like I said, I'll be giving both of these away, probably in March. 
Um, I just hit 150 subscribers, so thank you everybody for that. And I think maybe these brushes will end up being my 150 subscriber giveaway. So look for that in the coming month here. All right, I think that's pretty good. Lather looks sufficiently hydrated, not sticky. And even though I'm not a big fan of badger brushes, I haven't I haven't minded this one. I've enjoyed using it. Um, getting to learn how to use a badger again was kind of fun for me. All right, so the razor today, I mentioned it in the opening, I'm going to be using the Parker Adjustable Injector. Uh, this one has a um, Schick, Chinese Schick uh, blade in it. Uh, this one's got, I think this is my fourth shave on this, which is usually, I usually don't press my injectors more than four or five shaves. So um, it's kind of this is probably going to be the last shave with it. I have it set to five. So this is an adjustable razor. Um, I didn't mention you can you can get these at Super Safety Razors. I think they're thirty two dollars. Um, I actually bought this one from Murphy and McNeil's um, used marketplace. This actually came to me through the used marketplace from. Ken over at Shave 326. So thanks, Ken. I am enjoying this. Uh, it is stainless steel on the outside and in all the adjustment mechanisms. The handle is uh, plastic, which is really my only nit on the construction. Um, I have a PAL injector, which actually has kind of the hard rubber, and I think that just makes for a better feeling razor this this plastic just kind of makes it feel a little bit on the cheap side but the rest of it's stainless steel and and it it does have it's light but it's got a little bit of weight to it um, the adjustment mechanism I'll see if we can get it to focus so that you guys can see this but the adjustment mechanism on this injector moves the guard so in a double edge razor, the, the adjustment mechanism moves the blade to adjust the blade gap. This adjustable injector works just like the PAL injector where it actually moves the blade guard further or closer um, to the top. So it basically changes that blade exposure. And like I said, I'm going to be using this on five. So let's get started. So injector razors, I think the angle is very intuitive. This is a very good, well any injector I think, is a very good introduction for people who are coming over from cartridge razors. Um, it's actually how I got my wife um, oh, got one little badger hair that we lost there, so did lose another one, but not a big deal. So, a few weeks ago, I finally convinced my wife to start using my PAL injector, and she has actually been really enjoying it. Um, I got her to try an injector a few years ago, but... I didn't realize it at the time, and I had a Persona blade in it, which I realized later I did not like those blades, so I think that was the problem when she tried the injector a while ago and didn't like it. The soap is really nice, gliding very, very well. So one thing that I found with this razor is because it's a little bit on the light side, 
I have a tendency to probably put a little bit more pressure on it than I should. Um, but surprisingly, it hasn't resulted in any excess irritation or anything. Normally with a, a, any sort of safety razor, including injectors, um, you don't really want to put any pressure on the razor. You just kind of let the razor rest against your skin and you let the weight of the razor do the work. I think with lighter razors, there's just not enough weight there. So they require a little bit of pressure. And for a lot of people, there's a tendency to go overboard to compensate for the lack of weight. So when I bought this razor, I knew I had to try it because I do enjoy my PAL adjustable and I'll be doing a comparison video in the future. But I was a little bit nervous that, that uh, it would be too mild. That was kind of the consensus I had heard from a lot of the other YouTube guys who had reviewed it was it was very, very mild. So I didn't have very high expectations. I've been using this for about a week now and I have actually been pleasantly surprised with the efficiency. It, it certainly does feel mild, even on five. I don't get a whole lot of blade feel, but it has still been effective. My results have still been good. So, like I said, I have been pleasantly surprised by it. So I don't know if you guys, try not to talk while the water's running there. I don't know how many of you guys watched my unboxing video where I opened this up, but I mentioned there that I actually bought this for my wife. So like I said, I finally got her using my towel and I'm just gonna freshen up the leather on the back of my head here. I actually finally got her using my pal, and at some point I'm going to want it back. And it's difficult because my wife can get a lot more uses out of a blade. And I only get four or five out of these injector blades. So it was starting to be one of those situations where I had to schedule in when I was going to be able to grab my towel and use it for a shave. Uh, so I bought, my, I bought this more for my wife. Um, she also uses the pal on low. So I thought from what I'd heard about this being a little milder and a little more gentle, I thought she might actually enjoy this better. So I wanted to check it out first, <clears throat> but I think after this shave, it's going to be my wife's turn. I'm going to try and get her to give her thoughts when I do my comparison video, since she will have used both the PAL and the Parker. So you might get to see some thoughts from her in case there's any women watching or in case any of you guys were considering trying to convert your wives um, get some thoughts from my wife on what she thinks of these two so I hope everybody is having a good weekend um, it is Sunday I should be getting this video up today this afternoon we had a relatively good week. We did have, did have to take our dog back into the vet again. We, well, we had two vet trips. So I mentioned last week we had to we had to take our 
13 year old for her last vet visit so that was kind of rough uh, but our other dog is still having some complications from his scorpion stain on his foot so got him some antibiotics trying to get that settled out Now, the one thing I think is tricky for head shavers with injectors, um, and this one is no exception, mainly because of the long handle. Uh, this is almost five inches for the handle. Is it, it can be tricky to get the angle right on the back of the head because you kind of have to, I don't know if you can see the contortion of my wrist here, but... Um, I think that's why I prefer shorter handled razors is for me it makes it easier to get the right angle on the back of the head. Uh, some, some head shavers disagree. Some think that a longer handle actually helps them cover the back of the head areas better. So just personal preference. Some people like different things. And that's the other thing about injectors is they do tend to kind of hang on to water as you rinse them. And compared to a double edge where you have two different cutting sides with any sort of a single edge razor, including the injectors, you have to rinse a little bit more frequently. All right, so that uh, razor felt good. The Barrister and Man, frankly, my pair felt really nice. Feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and get on to the face shave. bit more water there. So I think, I mean, you definitely get the pear in this soap, but I think the ginger is actually the prominent note to me. Like I said, it's really nice. Um, I've I have a couple of Bear Stern Man soaps, and I don't love either one of the scents. And I know I'm gonna sound like a heretic because one of them is Seville, which everybody loves. I like it, I don't love it. Um, so this, to me, is a completely different type of scent profile than those two that I already have. Those have a lot of spicy notes to them, um, this one, it's not quite a gourmand to me. There's, uh, there's something in the background there that kind of makes it more, I don't know, not a cologne note, but not quite gourmand. But it's nice. I, I really enjoy it. So thank you, Brian. I really appreciate that. So the other thing I was surprised about with this razor was on my face. Um, I have really, really thick growth on my face. And really, really dark hair. And I can't shave against the grain. Even across the grain sometimes is a struggle. So I typically like very, very efficient, aggressive razors because that's what it takes to give me a decent shave. This razor has surprised me 
because it seems to do such a good job while feeling very, very mild. And it's really surprised me on my neck. My neck is always the test for any razor. Um, I think, like most people, it's the most... Oh, that soap kind of washed out a little bit there at the end. Didn't get quite enough loaded. do is I'm going to squeeze the brush out a little bit. Kind of hand apply. It's a little trick for anybody that doesn't know that. If you're, if you feel like you're uh, running out of soap towards the end of the shave, just kind of squeeze that brush out. There's usually lots of lather left inside the brush. So yeah, like I said, the uh, the Parker has really, really surprised me on my neck. Uh, usually I struggle with light razors because they, uh, my neck hair is so thick. The r light razors tend to tug. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that's the worst spot on my neck right here on the right side where I have the circular pattern. And this just mowed right through it. All right, that is the shave. So, like I said, the uh, Parker adjustable felt very, very comfortable, very, very efficient. I'll go ahead and hit the shower and I'll come back for post shave. All right, so I finished up off camera with some Thayer's Peach Witch Hazel, which I just put in a glass bottle here. Unfortunately, you can't get it anymore. They discontinued the peach, which is a shame because it's one of my favorites. Uh, but I just felt like that went well with the, uh, frankly, my pear soap that we used today. And then uh, also used uh, Allen Block. So the star of the show today were these two guys. Um, if you guys are looking for a quality badger brush, and handle. Um, you can actually mix and match knots and handles. Um, I'm pretty sure Eric will set them for you. You just have to send him a, a note um, when you order them. So if you're looking for a uh, high value uh, Badger synthetic uh, brush, Shade Forge is a very good place to go. Um, like I said, they provided me with this particular brush to evaluate, uh, but I've, I've bought from them before and will continue to. They offer some good products. And then the Parker Adjustable, which results were really good. Um, not as close as the last few shades, but like I said, this blade is on its, uh, probably its last use for me. So that's kind of par for the course when you're getting towards the end of a blade life. So really, really good razor, really, really good brush. Um, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for this brush and the synthetic in the future. And I will also be doing a Pal adjustable versus Parker adjustable 
video in the near future. So if you guys are interested in either one of those, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time.